low SGD, sacred geometry decoded, and I'll look at some metrology and some connections. And bait. so essentially, the question: Did the Greeks know about the Egyptian cubit? Short answer is yes, of course. Egyptians were still using a cubit at the time of the Hellenistic Greeks, but the question is, for instance, at the time of Herodotus, um, the question really is: Did the Greeks know about the ancient Egyptian royal cubit? And so, you know, the main when it comes to metrology is quite complex. So um, you'll often, you know, first page search will give you. It's um, yeah, you have to go a little bit more in depth when it comes to these things. And so, uh, when they talk about Egyptian royal cubit, now they'll specify cubits range from 523.5 to 529.2 millimeters in length. Um, but that's covering a long period of history. So what really matters is the 523.5 millimeter. So this is the Egyptian royal cubit that matters the most because it was the one used on the Great Pyramid or Pyramid of Khufu and the other major pyramids of Giza as well. Uh, went into some detail what is the, the cubit, the, try, be as precise as possible based on the internal purport, um, dimensions of the pyramid as well as the uh, exterior of a base and it's 523.55 uh, the average but that's what you know we're talk splitting fractions of a millimeter and not just tenths but hundreds of a millimeter different so 523.5 based on the average of the base length also for instance the width of the grand gallery or the dimensions of the king's chamber that's the one used there so when you go in a little bit more detail, um, you'll find uh, even early 20th century, they defined the cubit on the pyramids as being 52.3 centimetres, 523 millimetres within this fraction of a millimetre difference. So, um, now what have I also because my interest in metrology and how that relates to uh, harmonics, temple design, and so forth, uh, the Egyptian cubit being equal to the Samian. So I saw this a lot, um, and it's mentioned in Herodotus, Herodotus's Histories 2, uh, chapter 168. And but when you actually pull up Herodotus, so 2 168, speaking about the Egypt, say their warriors were given 12 a plot of land 12 acres tax-free it also mentions that they had special rations given to them but their acre is 100 cubits each way and is equal of the Samian acre so that's actually where it comes from but it's the Egyptian cubit equal to the Samian well he's actually specifying the acre here so I just wanted to look a little bit further and the good this quotation whether it's Egyptian cubit being equal to the Samian or the Egyptian acre being equal to the Samian because possibly you could interpret their acre is 100 cubits each way which is equal of the Samian acre well that could be that it's 100 cubits each way but the Samian is not necessarily a cubit or that the areas correspond whether it's 100 by 100 or so but this quotation would be meaningless without a definition and we can get a good definition in the work of Mark Wilson Jones looking into metrology uh, metrological reliefs uh, all across the Greco-Roman world and uh, and for instance he um, f uh, found and then decoded the stone of Salamis and that it's a metrological relief it has multiple units of measure even the philosophy of architecture of a principle such as Vitruvian man is uh, built into there uh, so he's one of his many papers Doric measure and architectural design evidence of the relief from Salamis. So we see the Salamis stone, it's partially damaged there, but you can still see the profile of the face. And so there we see the tracing of it and where the theoretical rest of the stone will go because that would come to the umbilicus or the navel, which is again clearly defined in the works of Vitruvius with Vitruvian man at the centre of the compasses is set on the navel and the image itself but the information contained therein so he's uh, four at so the stone 
for breadth, four Attic feet, three and three fifths Doric feet, three and three eighths Samian feet, or two and a quarter royal cubits. And, he's, and in the paper specifies, uh, like talking about Egyptian royal cubits. The theoretical overall breadth of a slab translates as 2,368 millimetres over corner to corner, or four and a half times 526 millimetre, a value possible identifiable with the Egyptian royal cubit. So there's the key 526 millimetres. But the key point about the Salamis stone, so just like the image of Vitruvian Man by Da Vinci was drawn, but the writing is based on... Um, ancient Roman description and even if you trans you know just overlay the stone on there it has uh, many wonderful little correspondences so even the foot matches the circle of uh, the tip of the head you know when you place it in there matches the navel to the tip of the head just like the profile here that's still seen on the stone and so the nice can you know, and it's literally like what they were writing about you know the philosophy of temple design proportions of the human body and symmetry so 2368 millimeters would be overall breadth of the stone if it included both sides because it's symmetrical so therefore that halved so from the navel to the edge of the stone 1184 millimeters so here he writes four attic feet equals so many Doric, but that's three and three eight Samian feet equals two and a quarter royal cubits and a foot in Greek is one and a half feet was a cubit so that just works out to be two and a quarter Samian cubits equals two and a quarter royal cubits and we just div divide that down and so a Samian cubit 526.22222 millimeters or again as he's describing 526 millimeters this corresponds to the cubit rod in the Turin Museum or the cubit rod of Maya who was the treasurer of Tutankhamun these cubit rods come uh, around 1500 BC at least a thousand years after the time of Khufu Khafre and the and the old kingdom there so it is an Egyptian cubit royal cubit but it is of the later period, it is not the 523.6, give or take, one-tenth of a millimetre Great Pyramid cubit. Okay, now also the theoretical breadth also corresponds to 8 times 296 millimetres, a value identifiable as the Attic foot. You could also call it the Ionic, but the... Um, 296 millimetres, so 296 times 8 is 2368, 296 times 4 is 1184 millimetres, an attic foot of 296 millimetres, four of them, and a gripper, uh, first century BC standardised a Roman foot at 296 millimetres. This is a foot that you can find recurring throughout, um, especially in Western Europe in the great cathedrals in um, uh, uh, and, uh, the obsolete German units of measure and so that's the Roman foot but also you can see that it has its origins in the Greek world so back to Vitruvius Da Vinci do, drew the image but it's based on the written description by Vitruvius first century BC as well so there we have a Salamis stone there we have what's called the um, sorry for the C, the Metrological Relief from the Ashmolean Museum and both of those have that connection with Vitruvian Man because it's a it's a philosophy of temple design symmetry and proportion man is a measure of all things the smaller parts of a temple must reflect uh, the larger parts and so forth and you can also see so that would be you could say the diameter of the circle based on the Salamis stone sorry, the radius of the circle, which is based on the, the navel or the umbilicus, as in umbilical cord, 1184 millimetres. And again, that Salamis stone, even the edge of a foot there, it's called the common Greek foot, which is essentially in a, an English foot, because of the condition of a stone, to get the precise measures down to, you know, really close, but 
it is hovering around very very close on either side depending on if you measure it from the inside or the external part of the carving the lines there but that metrological relief shows the same principle man is a measure of all things if you extend fingertip to fingertip it is the width of a square therefore your height is equal to extended arms out fingertip to fingertip uh, this um, was suspected to be a pediment so that like above a doorway we have that triangular portion but the metrological relief has a few other parts can uh, so that's equal to a hand or you know or the width of your knuckles or width, four fingers equals a hand 16 fingers equals a foot so you can see how the foot how the, the hand what's called the measurement of the hand so you know, four fingers corresponds to there so that, that carving it's not damaged it's, it's like someone's implanted their knuckle in there it's almost like a someone's punched in there so yeah from knuckle to knuckle or the width, width of your fingers but the key part is his foot that has been placed in there that's the broken off piece but using the center line you can find the symmetry which is how you get the larger and the turn so you take those you line them up and by definition such as in Vitruvian man a man should be six feet high or six feet wide fingertip to fingertip six feet is four cubits on the Greek scale or so imperial so in English Greek Roman one and a half foot was a cubit not for the Egyptians though but we can see that the center line is equal to three and a half feet so therefore it actually would be seven feet high now that's another thing embedded in Vitruvian man the image by da Vinci the description says six feet should be the height and the width but it's if you actually use his foot which is equal to his wrist from his elbow on the drawing it turns out to be seven so this is one of these things that's born in there I'll put this link in the description as well I did a video going a little bit more into that but the descriptions um, give the length of his foot to be 296 millimeters that's the four attic feet which is found on the Salamis stone or the Roman foot of Agrippa, 1st century BC. Now based on that, 3.5 feet, that would be 1036 millimetres, or 518 millimetres times 2, which is close, but not quite the Egyptian raw cubit, so a couple, you know, you barely notice a difference. When you do 4, 5, 10, or 100 of them, it starts to build up. Again, the descriptions of so they found the center line, and there's uh, from, from the Ashmolean Museum and others who have studied. They would have it at 2.09 meters in. That would be the width of a man, fingertip to fingertip, which corresponds to height. So the center line would be 1.045 meters, or two cubits of 522.5 millimeters. Now we're a millimeter away from that so there's a little bit of contradiction there between the um, measures provided based on that foot being 296 millimeters not quite but based on the, what's called the overall dimensions and that would have to do with uh, you know is there a leftover so the tip of a the finger there but we can see how it's a little bit longer there at, at the base the widest portion as compared to the fingertips there so we're incorporating the Roman foot but we do have the Egyptian royal cubit there or something like a millimeter um, away from it and again because the condition of the stone to have a few millimeters um, off there so sort of yes but no so did the Egyptians know about the royal Egyptian cubit well they did but the later Egyptian cubit not the one quite used on the Egyptian Great Pyramid, although the Ashmolean relief would also show that there is uh, reasonable evidence for that, but um, the description of Herodotus, the Samian being corresponding to the cubits of Egypt, yes, but it would correspond to the Turin rod or the cubit rod of Maya, which goes to the time of Tutankhamun, which comes sometimes later. So, SGD, have a good one.